Could you please help me with the screen share access? Uh, sure, I want to make just a few comments first and then I'll give you the presentation right. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you for joining the February 4th, 2020 Volta call. Just a reminder to everyone that the meetings are public and recorded and we put them on YouTube after the meeting concludes. So please be mindful of that during the discussion today. And we have just a few um, items to cover on today's agenda. The first one was reviewing non-brigade related JIRAs between 2511 and 2552. I did not find any that appeared non-brigade related. So that one, I believe we have nothing to cover today unless I hear differently from anyone on the call. I'll give just a moment. Okay, and then after that, we're gonna really start today then with a demo. So we've got Oncar, we'll be uh, talking about on-demand statistics. So I'll give him presentation rights in a minute. And then we'll go into an alarm simulation demo from Scott. And uh, then some brief discussion about the upcoming proposed Volta face-to-face -face meeting. So with that, Ankar, if you're ready, let me stop sharing and give you presentation rights. Yeah. And see. Hmm. I don't know if I give it to you. You may actually be able to just grab it. It looks like we can see your slide now. We're all set. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Good morning, all. Uh, so today I'm going to give a presentation on on-demand API uh, design uh, demo. So basically, uh, let me start with the architecture, how we have implemented this on-demand API uh, implementation for OMCI test action. So we have decided uh, to have like, you know, one component called uh, name proxy, which is, would be resides in Siba uh, name layer. And then name proxy have itself a gRPC server and gRPC client. And this operator gRPC client uh, would be implemented by the operator. So basically the OMCI test action, on-demand OMCI test action uh, have uh, basically the, the on-demand test action is already implemented uh, uh, in Volta 2.x, but it is as a part of polling action. So currently I have implemented with the on-demand API service. So let me start with the flow, how it would be. So basically operator uh, uh, gRPC client will hit with the uh, ONU ID. So basically at the time of pre-provisioning, we will get the ONU ID. With that ID, the name proxy gRPC server will receive that ID and it will connect to the gRPC client which will responsible for connect with the Volta 2.x uh, Volta server. And here actually at third step, the initiation of on-demand test action will invoke. So whatever the gRPC uh, request formation is done in the RW core itself, and it will load the particular adapter and send it to the Volta adapter. From here, the invocation of OMCI test action will invoke and it will send the request to the hardware that is to the through the OLT through the ONU that is OMCI test action will send it to the ONU. In, in response with that we will get a two response that would be a successful response that is the request is accepted or rejected by the ONU and the result which will come later after some time. So once we will receive the <clears throat> we will receive the success or fail response at Volta ONU adapter so it will send that response back to the name proxy client. So which will evaluate that based on the success, it will pull. So basically based on the success, we will wait for the result. And the, once the result is arrived at Kafka bus, we will send, we will send uh, the gRPC client will pull the result from the Kafka bus. So here in entire implementation, the requests are uh, basically separated or segregated with the uh, uh, concept called unique ID. So here gRPC client is generating the UUID. Based on that category, we are just, uh, just separating the request from each other. So let me walk you through the demo. As of now, if you have any doubt, you can ask. So basically, as you could see here, oh, just a moment. Hello, can you see my second screen? 
Uh, yeah, we see uh, yeah. like a, a shell terminal window. Yeah, okay. Just give me one second. Yeah, here, as you could see here, uh, I have pre-provisioned pre my devices. And this is the uh, basically a ONU ID. In the second terminal, in the second terminal, uh, basically this is a name proxy gRPC client. This is the operator related proxy which I have implemented it. And before that, I have up my uh, name proxy container which contain a gRPC server as well as gRPC client. So I'm just going to hit this request uh, to the name proxy. And with response to that, I'm getting this uh, OMCI test action result from the proxy. So with that, we could able to retrieve the parameter like receive optical power, temperature, laser bias current, and all. So with that, if you could see the logs of a name proxy, you could able to differentiate that we have generated uh, UUID. Docker logs. So here you could see that we have generated this uh, UUID as a unique ID for the every request. With the response, you could find the field UUID maybe somewhere here just me just hold. just hold on i'll copy this to the notepad So the UUID identifies the... So basically, yeah. you could see the UUID with the results. Sorry? So the UUID is used for identifying a particular response, is that...? Yeah, so basically, uh, while sending the request uh, from the name proxy to the Volta uh, open OVNU adapter, we are sending UUID as a part of the request so that while returning the result from the Volta ONU adapter, we could able to differentiate that whatever we have sent, we have received it with the differentiation with the UUID. Okay. So to clarify, um, what Oncar's created, he's created, you know, um, a blocking sort of synchronous API that uh, the operator makes a request and, and he does get a response. Um, to this on-demand request, but the underlying implementation in Volta is very asynchronous. So um, you make the request to the ONU, it initiates this uh, test action, and then sometime later the ONU will respond uh, with the test response. Um, this is kind of, I think, a little bit unique in OMCI that that um, there, there's sort of this three-phase thing here where you initiate the test response, you get a uh, or you initiate the test request, you get a response that it started, and then sometime later the results come back. So the the reason for these UUIDs are because we have created this blocking API at the NEM level to be able to associate that response that comes in later um, with the client's original request so that the client gets the right response back to his request. Um, I hope that makes some sense. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's it uh, from my side. If anyone has any questions, so they can ask. So obviously the uh, time is running on getting the response, right? Yes. So if, the, if the response doesn't come back, what, what, I guess you respond negatively to the originator. So that would be a question of whether the the timeout is is it configurable? If you know if the response doesn't come back in thirty seconds, you issue a I never I never got the response. Um, yeah, basically the timeout is handled in that if uh, within like you know uh, uh, the thir thirty second if response is not coming, then timeout is handled. Yeah, well this this looked. 
good to me. It, it seems like a very convenient API to me for, you know, when someone does want to do an on-demand measurement, they don't have to worry about any of this uh, asynchronicity. They, they do have this nice uh, blocking API. So I think, um, I think this has worked out the way I expected it to work out. Uh, does anyone else have any questions or comments about the, the approach in general? Um, would it be possible, maybe not now, but uh, to extend it for other types of uh, uh, ad hoc OMCI queries? Um, I can see this being useful for other NEs that um, you know, aren't just the um, um, NEG or the uh, ONTG. Um, again, it doesn't have to specifically be part of this, but in general, it might be useful. Yeah, so that was that was something I kind of wanted to discuss a little bit because the brigade does have a couple of stories about implementing more on-demand APIs, and you know whether we want to extend this proxy uh, to support those other APIs and do the same sort of thing where you have, you know, one gRPC call to Volta that says I want this OMCI message, you know, I want to perform this OMCI request, and then the response comes back in Kafka and the uh, on cars proxy um, that matches the request to the response. So it, it seems like in service of these other um, on-demand stories that this, this could be the approach we want to go with. Yeah, I just think even ad hoc messaging for OMCI or just any other kind of uh, adapter specific request. Um, for example, with, with the mid templating that's come up recently, there's no real way of through the API to say, tell the ONU adapter to generate or produce the, the MIB for a running ONU. And, you know, it's very specific to an ONU adapter and it may not be implemented in all device adapters, but kind of having some way to, to, to funnel in a, a request um, from the Northbound API that is very contextual to the adapter might be useful, OMCI or otherwise. Yeah, it does sound good to generalize it even, even beyond PMs like that. that that's a good point. But yeah, for now, I don't see any reason to, to muddy this up with any of that. Uh, hi, this is Amit. Uh, so uh, what level of uh, parallelism has been already implemented in the NIMP proxy? So basically, like, uh, can it handle multiple requests in parallel? Or that's yet to be done? I think that needs to be done, uh, basically. OK. Yeah, let's let's make um, addressing scalability and parallelism one of our one of our next priorities on this. Um, yeah, because we do want we do want to ensure that we can handle multiple requests at the same time if if they are blocking for a while. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll make a Jira story or something about that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. This is uh, Girish here. I had another question. Sorry, I joined late. So uh, if you have already answered this, uh, so sorry for that. So uh, as part of Bal Brigade, uh, we were working on, you know, implementing an on-demand API to pull the Gemport and uh, Uniport statistics. So uh, is is this does this framework, uh, you know, already support that, or uh, you know, we need to? It would be very easy to add, uh, you know. Uh, uh, such a functionality uh, very easily. So uh, the basically uh, the name proxy currently supporting uh, uh, queries related to OMCI test action, but mm -hmm. we could extend the name proxy to have like support any type of on-demand services. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So currently, as of now, I I I I just say that uh, OMCI test action is only supported here. Okay. Yeah. As long as it's extensible, yeah, that should be okay. Uh, so we we'll look into it. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so Amit again. Uh, sorry, I might have missed that. So uh, which repo is the code uh, present in? Is that one of the Sabre repos? Uh, a name proxy code I'm, I'm, I'm just submitting in, in this week. So I have raised, like I have to raise the request for, you know, uh, repository allocation. 
and after that i will uh, push my changes to the repository so maybe in this week i'll complete yeah, thanks Uncle. something else to bring up as part of this given our uh, being careful about proto editions i think this will imply a new uh, proto change as well right yes matt so basically i have added uh, my changes and raised the review request for the same so it's in same still in review okay yeah so given our conversation during the stabilization brigade um we all want to review those closely um given that we've run into issues where if, um certainly things with protos or maybe libraries change and other dependent uh repositories that aren't caught up we get kind of in this you know dependency loop um so just again heads up for everyone on the call we'll we'll have to have a look at this proto change okay yeah so since we have david here could we um add this of the list of things to ask the g5 about the um i believe on cars proto patch is is there so you can see what the context of it is i'm i'm assuming it's simple addition i haven't looked at it in a moment but it's it, you haven't changed in the existing protos, have you, on car? This is just adding new new methods. Yeah, I have added new methods and one more uh, a new file in the proto buff repository. So hopefully that that should be low disruption. But if we could add that to the list of things to clear with the G five, um, so that we can know if we can get that in. Yeah, if, uh, whatever commit that is, if you don't mind, on the just the Volta channel in Slack, just uh, point that out uh, so we can find it. Okay, man. I'll, I'll post that my changes in the Volta channel. Thank you. Yeah, and I did I did drop a few comments on your patch on on the Protos patch last week. Basically, I think identifying some things that look like they could be removed. You know, like. Um, yang related stuff that i believe we've decided to get rid of so a few things you might be able to delete um but but yeah we'll drop a comment in in the volta channel so that people there know to review and and we'll try to we'll try to get that through because all of your other patches are probably blocked on uh, on that one going in first okay okay maybe i'll look for like i will look the comments that you have given me and I will resolve that also. Yeah, I think I think all the stuff I list is very minor. Okay. Okay. Uh, anything else for Ankar? Okay, thank you very much for your, for the presentation and demo. Then, uh, Scott, I think your demo is next. Do you want to just take the screen control or that would be great. And while sure. you're switching over, uh, since Matt and Scott, since we brought up the discussion that happened on David's stabilization call about proto changes, do we want to recap that for the larger group here or not necessary? Any thoughts? I thought it might be worthwhile just yeah, I, I think I think um, you know just letting everyone know that any any proto changes at this point need need to go through the G five would be handy just in case anyone didn't wasn't on the stabilization call and didn't learn it there. Yeah, I think most folks were there, but maybe not everyone. So just thought we'd mention it. Okay, thank you. And then Scott, anytime you're set, feel free to go ahead and start your demo, and we're seeing your screen. Okay, great. Yeah, so this is going to be a fairly quick demo. So what I wanted to do is to show off. Uh, first of all, am I? Yeah, I'm. I'm not on mute, so you guys can hear me and you can see the screen. Um, well, I wanted to show off um, a couple changes I've made to uh, BB Sim and uh, to Volt Volt Cuddle lately. Um, the idea of these changes is to make it easier to do work with events and alarms and PMs and such, as well as to facilitate generating uh, automated testing for things like alarms. Um, so as, as people may be aware, the, the Kafka bus that we have is in a, uh, uh, an encode, a gRPC encoded format, which makes it uh, difficult to use with tools like um, 
Kafka cat for, for human readability. Uh, so what I've done is I've extended a uh, volt cuddle um, with an event listen command that will um, connect to the Kafka bus and it will retrieve the events from it and it will display them in human readable format. Um, so I, I hope most people here are at least uh, passingly familiar with uh, volt cuddle. It's uh, the replacement for the, um, the old Volta command line interface. Um, and it's uh, sort of a single binary that you can install on your administrator computer and um, just start using. Uh, so the new command I added to it is called volt cuddle event listen. So dash H will tell you um, kind of what, what options are and it does have some unique options. Um, so down here for the listen command, we can control the output format, we can filter, we can do like a tail follow where you would just keep streaming uh, events. Um, not just stopping at, you know, what was there when you ran the command, but just continue, um, like, like streaming a log, just stream uh, future events to your console. Um, you can view summaries or show the body. Um, you can limit account. Uh, you can do a sense so you can uh, tell it that you don't want um, events that are older than a certain amount. Um, so let me, let me try this, uh, just bolt cuddle event listen with, with none of these options. And what we should see is uh, every event uh, printed um, in the Volta events uh, Kafka channel uh, since uh, this Volta installation was brought up until the current uh, Kafka high water mark is hit. And it's like a thousand of them. So there they are. So it printed them all out. Um, there have been 5199 messages, and you can see a lot of them are PMs. There's ONU KPI event twos. Um, lot, lots of PMs because those are happening frequently, but there would also be alarms in here if there were uh, alarms going on. Now, of course, if you want just one, um, you can listen to just one with the count. So that just got the first one. Uh, we can do queries. So for example, if we just wanted to see the FEC history PMs, do that. And I told it to print five of those. Um, and uh, what it's doing right now is it's printing uh, sort of a, a short summary of, of each event, but not uh, printing the actual body. So if we include this uh, show body command, um, then it will show the, uh, the bodies of the messages. Um, so here it's printed this out in, uh, in a GRP curl human readable format. Um, and we can see here is a, is a, um, performance metric that came in. It's an FEC history. You know, it's, it's got the context fields populated, the interval start and stop time, and then the actual metric. So this is just the, um, the raw format that is in the, uh, the event protos. Um, if you wanted to consume those, uh, with, with, a with a component, uh, you can tell it to output that in JSON. Uh, so there it is in JSON. Just the exact same thing we just looked at, but in JSON, and, and you could, you know, read this in to something that was JSON aware. Uh, now you'll see these uh, log messages like count reached and consumed how many messages. Those are printed to standard error. So if you um, pipe standard error to uh, dev null, um, you could get rid of those and you would have pure JSON uh, output that, that would not have uh, any non-parsable stuff in it. And then to show the alarms that have been received, um, so here I'm going to filter by type of event. I'm going to filter device event. Um, I'm going to print the bodies of it. I'm going to do it in JSON, and I put it on follow mode so it will continue streaming. Uh, so you can see there's all of the alarms that have been received. Um, so you can see some, you know, there's some dying gasps. Uh, this was actually me uh, practicing the demo. Uh, but going, going further back, um, an ONU activated. Um, all of the uh, alarms since, since the pod came up. Uh, so that's the basic uh, capability that I've added to Volt Cuddle was this uh, visualization of these messages. Uh, the other half to this is some stuff that I've recently added to BBSIM. So BBSIM, uh, like Volt Cuddle, it has a BBSIM Cuddle uh, that is used to control BBSIM. 
and I have added an alarm command over there. So if you do alarm, it actually has a couple subcommands. There's a clear, a raise, and a list. So if we type in list, this will list all of the alarms that BBSIM is able to simulate. Here, let me clear this window. So if we want to simulate one of them, uh, BB Sim cuddle alarm raise, and we're going to raise a dying gasp, and we're going to raise it on our first uh, BB Sim ONU. And you can see here that when we did that, um, we received a, a, the corresponding event over here in uh, Volt Cuddle out of Kafka. And I'm also printing down here. This is the uh, BB Sim container uh, log file, uh, just so you can see the little debugging info of BB Sim when it's actually posting these alarm indications. So it, it posted a dying gasp indication, ONU ID one status on, um, and, and that's, that's the body of the indication. Clearing an alarm is the same, but you use the, uh, the clear command. And you can see down here, it posted the same thing, um, status off, and over here we got a, uh, a dying gasp uh, clear event. Now, several of the alarms um, have additional parameters in them. Uh, for example, the drift of window alarm has, has a drift parameter and a um, EQD parameter. So I have uh, I've created the ability with this uh, BBSIM cuddle. When you're raising an alarm, you can specify optional parameters with this dash P command, um, and it will put those into the, um, the alarm indication. Uh, so you're actually going to see this isn't going to quite work right, um, but I'll explain that in a moment. So I'm going to raise a drift of window, uh, that same ONU, and specifying a drift and, with a, and a new EQD. Um, so looking at here, down here, you can see down here, uh, drift of window indication, um, the ONU ID and status, um, and the drift was set to, do, to two, and the EQD was set to two. Uh, now, I said this didn't work quite right, and you can see here um, that what came out of the adapter on the Kafka has the wrong, um, has the wrong uh, drift, and it has the wrong EQD. So that, um, that's something I need to look into. That may be a bug. Um, it, it's not a bug in the alarm simulator or in Volt Cuddle. It would have to be a bug in the adapter itself that those values didn't get propagated. Uh, so I'm going to look into that. I thought this was uh, propagating them last week, so I'm going to look and see if there's some kind of regression has happened. Um, but that's just the kind of, of interactive diagnostics you can do with this. Um, I'm hoping that it does become of value to people who want to work on alarms as well as anyone who wants to um, be able to easily view and query the uh, event stream that is that is on the uh, Bolt Event uh, Kafka bus. So that's uh, really all I was planning on uh, showing. Any uh, any questions? How do we inform Volt Cuddle where to find Kafka? Is that a new config? Yeah. So yeah, you can see there's a Kafka value here in the uh, the config file. Um, and if we do dash H, you can see there is a dash K dash dash Kafka uh, command line option to override it as well. Uh, now, one thing to note is that this DNS name here does have to work in whatever context you're running uh, Volt Cuddle. Um, actually, the whole name. That whole name needs to look up and it needs to resolve to an IP address that is running the Kafka service. And similarly, this uh, port here needs to be forwarded um, if you're running Kafka inside of a container. This name and this port have to actually reach um, Kafka. That's a little bit um, more, uh, more difficult than you would think uh, because um, you, you may need to edit your Etsy hosts and you may need to adjust kind Volta to um, add that port forward. Is that documented in the readme? Um, that we need the DNS and the port forwarding? I don't think it is. I'll make a note about it. 
but this is no different than any other interacting with Kubernetes hosted names and services. It, it's a little bit different. Yeah, so one of the things is if you try to contact to Kafka over, for example, an IP address, Kafka will, because there's multiple brokers, it wants to be able to, I believe, redirect you to a particular broker and it will send back a DNS name. So if, whereas in a lot of other cases, we could, you know, simply point you to an IP, it gets complicated, especially if you ended up having multiple brokers and the brokers were containerized. There's, there's work to do at kind of the operator deployment level to, um, to make sure your Kafka is connected up in a way that all of these DNS names match. Right, right, okay. Makes sense, thank you. Anyway, if there's no, uh, if there's no other questions, um, that's it for me. Okay, thank you, Scott. Very cool, thank you. This is good stuff. Sure, um, glad you like it. And I'll have my screen back up in just one moment. Okay, so we've done the demos and the uh, I did not have at least the start of the call any items that I saw for all discuss and that's still the case up here on the on the dashboard. So the next item is then talking about the proposed face-to-face -face Volta meeting. So I did provide a link to Sarov's email. Hopefully everyone saw that and there was a poll in there as well for uh, if you're interested, able to attend and so forth. And I, Sarov, I think I saw you on the bridge. Do you want to take a few moments to talk about this or if not, then I can, but I have your email up on the screen now. Um, you can go ahead, uh, Julie. Okay. So anyway, as I kind of mentioned already, he has the poll here to get us a level of interest in the event, and it is going to be the first time we're proposing having one in Europe. So thanks to Deutsche Telekom for their offering to host this in Berlin, and it's the week of April 27th. So we have the goals. He's called those out here in the email and is planning for MVP 2.0 for SIBA, kind of following what we've done here with our planned release for MVP 1.0 and then some appreciation for all of the work and all of the surge team participation that's gone into getting this done. So anyway, that's just a, a quick plug for this. And please uh, remember, if you have not responded to the poll, to please do that so that ONF can determine if we have enough uh, show of interest and this in order to proceed. And then a reminder also, as he has in here, this is open to everyone. And, and so I think that pretty much covers it. Uh, any questions from the group? Okay, then that takes us through our agenda for today. Are there any additional topics that the group would like to bring up for larger discussion today? I'm not hearing any, so I think we can go ahead and conclude a bit early, give everyone a little time back. Thank you, everyone, and thank you, Onkar and Scott, for the demos today. Appreciate those both, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, everyone. I will go ahead and stop the recording. Thanks, Julie. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Thanks Julie. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.